Yes, there's that myth about jumping spiders are able to take out redback spiders. Ooh, is it true or is it just one of them spider myths? Warning. The spider warning on this video has been removed. I do this because the YouTube demonetization process picks off these videos as being non-advertiser friendly. And let's be reminded, these videos are highly educational. Let's take a look inside the spider tank. It's now five and a half weeks that this redback spider tank has been in action and it might be worthwhile to have an update. It's going to help in this video if I take the top off. Don't worry, nothing's going to jump out. Mind you, if you look carefully there, the jumping spider is still alive and kicking, hey? Yeah, let's give it a bit of a tease. Nice work, the jumping spider. This little update's going to seem a little bit complex because there's some redback spiders here from another uh, neighbor's bin that I cleaned out, but I'll try and explain it the best I can. I think the first spider I want to talk about is Mrs. Big Mother. Okay, this redback is the dominant redback in this tank. It's laid up two egg sacs, even though there are three there. One of the egg sacs is the surrogate egg sac from when I cleaned out the bins. You'll have to look at another video to fully understand that. But I can notice that this redback will always take the largest critter that's getting about in the tank. The other redbacks in here will take our smaller critters. This female here is the big, big mother. Just looking at those three egg sacs there, I noticed one of them, and I'm just going to try and point to it, has got like a black mark developing on there. So I'm not sure whether that is part of what that native bee did. I should have marked the egg sac that the bee was playing with. I'm not sure when the surrogate egg sac is due to hatch, but I'm, I'm pretty sure the first egg sac this large redback spider had laid up will be due around Halloween. Yeah, it's nothing better than a Halloween spider egg sac, is there? On another corner of the metal structure within this tank is a smaller redback spider. It is eating a wolf spider at the moment. These spiders devour wolf spiders, uh, beetles, basically anything that's a ground hugging bug will be nice food for the redback spider and it is having a lovely time in there. And this spider seems to always reside in this corner of the structure. On another corner of the structure, and also the corner of the tank, and I'll point a few things out of my pointer here. I've got a little teenager who's up there. That could be a little teenager from when we looked at this tank last time. And I've also got a larger female here who was feeding on a black beetle, and that is one of their favourite fares. And it was a bit of a surprise to see the spider set up between the metal structure and the corner of the glass tank. I wasn't expecting to see that. That red back's a pretty one, and I'd say by the back end of her and the size that it is, she's not far from laying an egg sac. There's a bit of a solo shot of Little Teenager, and she is very small, yet very cute. And in what I call the penthouse apartment in this spider tank, this red back here has laid up an egg sac, it's a fresh one, and it has also knocked off two black beetles. I would call this female here the second most dominant spider in the spider tank. Yes, I think this one will become one of the really feisty ones in the tank. I've been keeping a bit of an eye on her, and uh, she's very, very red back. Now, another curious thing in the spider tank is the egg sac that was from the first red back that was put in here. I hope it was the first one. That was the Mrs. Cow red back spider. Uh, from what I can see, that egg sac, uh, nothing has come out of that. It hasn't hatched from what I can work out. It's, I would believe it's... Oh, well and truly into the due time, um, but I'm just going to live and let live or live and let die and I'll just leave it in there and it may just become spider food or something else. I'll just get some video here. There's the red back that's on the corner or between the structure and the corner doing some moving about. Uh, a lot of the time these spiders are basically stationary. They don't move, um, but boy oh boy, when they want to move and want to do something, they can actually do things very fast. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's gone back to a statue. Sometimes extremely boring to look at, but other times extremely dynamic. Just looking back at the uh, larger female and that big beetle that she captured and it took her a while to take control of that one. That's a monster meal for her. Um, wow, she's, she's a feisty one, I can tell you. But then again, I saw that in the other spider tank. Uh, the largest females tend to dominate the spider environment. As for the bottom of the spider tank, uh, yes, the greenery has been growing, but I've let this dry out a bit. Uh, mind you, in the real world, would have had a stack of rain. And I've just gone in closer there, and if you look carefully, you might see the carcasses of things that the redbacks have eaten. I'll discard them onto the bottom. I've put a lot of millipedes in there. Mind you, I'm yet to see one of the redbacks catch a millipede and have it for a little uh, uh, thing to eat. 
Uh, that's sort of curious. I had seen them in the real world uh, so often with millipedes and things in their webs. I think I know why uh, well some of the spiders have decided to set up between the glass and the structure here because where I put the spider tank during the day and it's covered up this is actually the warm side and I think that the spiders will often gravitate towards a warmer environment. I'll just try and get a clear shot of uh, the big female in here uh, without glass around her because the glass does take away uh, she doesn't want to play she's just going to put web on me isn't she? She thinks I'm a threatening thing and now I'm, I was going to try and get her to tease up the top here no it's not quite going to work or maybe it is come on come on girlie come up the top for me please no nah. nah, she says blow you I've got egg sacs to protect and she's trying to bite the tweezers and the other thing I'll point out about the big mother here is it's built the largest web network it really has taken over uh, this quadrant of the tank I think that's uh, very important to point out yeah she's acted in a very red back way in many many ways and she's even strung up some twigs and things here this is what red backs often do uh, they do this sort of activity even in nature uh, where they have their nests. That's one of the hallmarks of these uh, styles of spiders. I'll have to admit I've become very comfortable keeping these styles of spiders. They are very interesting to keep. Um, they're very easy to keep as well. Although, and I must give you this warning, uh, they are very dangerous to keep. If these things get out of control, uh, let's say for some reason, I don't know, I had an accident here or the, the tank busted open, then you've got redback spiders, which are dangerous spiders, uh, lurking about, and they're going to try and find uh, hidey holes, uh, maybe in places that you don't want to find them, and I'll just very carefully get the lid back on. Considering what's going on with the XX down there, I'll have to come in with the muslin cloth and cover this area up here, or the spiderlings will escape through here. Mm, the luxury of taking this lid off will have gone soon because once those egg sacs open up this tank will be full of deadly baby redback spiders. Well I hope you enjoyed taking a look at the spider tank. Uh, don't bank on them too often because well my channel isn't brave wilderness and unless you're one of those spanky channels well you just get smacked down and smacked off the site at every opportunity. And just recently in Sydney, man, we have had a stack of rain. Uh, I've always said that there's an environmental factor to pulling down these spiders. We've got to be educational in these videos these days. And I'm sure that with the amount of rain that we've had, it would have knocked back some of these redback spiders and flooded them out of wherever they are. Maybe we'll finish this video up with one of the storms that I captured on my camera, which was just set on auto setting, so I don't know how good or bad it's going to be. a bit clothed for comfort. 